Well, warm welcome to today's talk, Thursday the 17th of August. Now, I want to bring you some data today from the American Society of Actuaries, the people that actually set the, the life insurance premiums. Uh, and of course, to do that, they need to know how many people are uh, passing away in any particular period of time. Uh, now, I'm going to give you some information from 2021, just to see if you want to watch this video. And in 2021, in the 15 to 34 year old age range, non-COVID deaths, so deaths not attributable to COVID, 21.4% higher than normal. Now, we see all these terrible headlines about so-and-so died during the football match or so-and-so died at work or died in their sleep. Often young people, and we've often, well, pretty well exclusively shied away from that on this channel because it's hard to use a particular case to, 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 to generate uh, general principles as to what's going on here because we really need to know what's going on here. So we've shied away from that. That's why I want to look at this overall data. So that was the data from 2021. Um, uh, data from the last quarter of 2022, October to December 2022. In the 35 to 44 year old age range, it was 34% uh, excess deaths in total. Now, these are clearly huge numbers. And we've got difficulty with the data, but the Society of Actuaries is actually pretty good because they're, they're interested in in the money, obviously, and have to get it right. I, I remember really early in 2020, I got a phone call from a, not exactly a panicked uh, insurance agent, but uh, a concerned insurance agent asking me how many people were going to die during the pandemic. And of course, at that time, we had no idea, but they were trying to predict this so they could work out life insurance premiums. Anyway, let's look at some of the data. It is a bit complicated. I'm going to focus mostly on 2020 and 2021 because that's the, where the data is completed. So we're pretty certain that that is accurate data. So let's look at these uh, graphics to begin with. Now, this is um, males aged 25 to 34. And the dotted lines you see across here are what we would expect for particular periods of time. So the 2017-2019 uh, average and the five-year trend and different trends doesn't matter too much. What we can see is that for uh, 2020 and 2021, it's clearly well above what we would expect in terms of deaths per thousand per year. Now, of course, in 2021, the vaccine programme was being rolled out, then we would expect deaths to get less, not to get higher. So this is an immediate concern. Now, it's strange, the, the Society of Actuaries are very open to the uh, admitting that a lot of these, well, the majority of the excess deaths now, especially in the younger age group, are not COVID related. Um, but they do seem rather reluctant to uh, take it any further than that, to start looking at causes of death, because you'd think they'd try to work out the causes of death so they could um, in increase the insurance premiums on those people, to put it quite, uh, put it quite crudely. Part of the weakness with the actuary's data, though, is the deaths do mostly come from the uh, CDC, Centres for Disease Control, although they do collect their own data from people that were insured. So they do have some independent data as well. Anyway, so, so that was the figure for males, as we see higher uh, excess deaths in the 25 to 34 year old age group. This was the one for uh, females. And again, we see it 2020, 2021 higher. Now, this is um, women in the 45 to 54 year old age range. But we see that this excludes COVID-19. So both of these data sets are excluding COVID-19 as the cause. And yet the cause is uh, the whatever is causing this is caused an increase in excess mortality, unfortunately. Now, this is the older range, age range where we would expect some uh, increased deaths. And actually, when we exclude COVID, even during the height of the pandemic, we don't really see excess deaths in this older age grade range. Now, this is largely to be expected, really, because um, people that would have died of something else could have died a few months earlier of COVID. So that's not surprising. What is surprising is the excess deaths not attributable to COVID in the younger age range. And we've seen this in all over the world. I'm not picking on the United States here by any means. This just happens to be United States actuaries data that we're looking at today. Um, so 2020 to 2021, these are the most complete years. So this is the Society of Actuaries and they do their own research for the insurance industry. Check out the references, of course, they're always there. 
Now, deaths reported by the US Center for Disease Control and Prevention. Now, this is really a, a bit of a weakness in their data in that a lot of the data does come from the Centers for Disease Control. But this is uh, what we have to uh, analyze. So this is all we can do at the moment. And what they do is they have these actual to expected ratios, A to E, actual deaths to expected deaths. So, for example, April to December 2020, it was 122 percent. So April to December 2020, it's in the pandemic. OK, you might expect that to a degree in the older age range. Uh, very few younger people, thankfully, died of COVID in the pandemic. But 22% over what we would expect uh, for the full year of uh, 20. So that was April to December. For the full year, it was 116.4. Uh, 13.3% excess deaths that were due to COVID. 3% were not due to COVID. But the point is the excess deaths that were not due to COVID were also occurring in the younger age group. Full year of uh, 2021, completed at 117%. Uh, so we'd actually still see a lot of difference there. 1164 to 117% in the overall death rate. And yet, of course, in 2021, when the vaccines were being rolled out, we would expect if the vaccines were so protective, as we've been told, that the death rate would plummet. But it didn't. The death rate did not plummet due to the vaccine rollout, not by any means. It went up by 0.6% if anything, but essentially, I think we could say essentially stayed the same. So questions to be asked there immediately, both in terms of what's causing the excess deaths and why the vaccines weren't saving a lot more lives. And in both years, the age group with the highest actual to expected Deaths was the 35 to 64 year old age group, the relatively middle aged adult uh, sort of uh, age range. During 2021, excess deaths were high in all age groupings. OK, it was still in the pandemic. But 15 to 34 year old non COVID deaths were 21.4 percent higher, as we said. Now, these are non COVID deaths, remarkably higher. Data through to March 2022, excess deaths, all age range, 115%. So really not much difference there in 2022. And we would expect a huge reduction in 2022, of course, because that was the time when Omicron came along. Omicron, 2022 was very much an Omicron year, way less people dying, way less pathogenicity in the disease. And yet, essentially, the figures for excess deaths are the same indicating that other factors were causing those excess deaths other than COVID. So the proportion of excess deaths attributable to COVID was way lower in 2022 than in 2021. And it's really surprising that Society of Action is, is not delving deeper into these causes because they're the ones that have to, well, basically, uh, they're the ones that have to uh, make the financial settlements. They have to cough up the cash for, for those that died that were insured. Um, data through to March 2022, excess deaths, basically the same as we said, 115.2%. Uh, so not a lot of not a lot of change. And as we said, the last part of 2022 from the from the latest report, 34% um, excess mortality in that age range, but higher uh, excess mortalities in all age ranges to some extent. Non-COVID deaths. Now um, let's just have a look at some of these uh, some of these graphics here. Um, where are we? There we go. Yeah. So um, females. Now, this is, this is uh, females by uh, age group. So um, we see the different age groups here. So th this highest one here, this purple age range, that's the 15 to 34. And we see that the way above the dotted baseline, really all the time from 2020 through to 2022, um, and basically, that is true for all age ranges, particularly the uh, particularly the 15 to 34 and the 35 to 64 year old age ranges, well above um, baseline. Um, and that, and if looking at it in males, again we see uh, even a more striking picture in males. Really, clearly these age ranges above the baseline of uh, deaths that we would expect. Again, this is these are all directly from their. Uh, website. Now, I've written this. If the main issue was lack of access to health care, why are excess deaths higher in 15 to 34 year olds, followed by 35 to 64 year olds? Because, of course, the people that need health care most are the uh, older age ranges. Thankfully, 
for most people, uh, the middle years of life are, are reasonably healthy. So this is not explained entirely by the lack of availability to healthcare, which is the main thing that's normally put forward by uh, people that are trying to explain this in terms of uh, trying to blame it on the pandemic, the fact that people were locked up and couldn't get access to healthcare. Well, it's simply not supported or not fully supported by, by this data. Why is the discussion on this not much more open, which is what we want to see on this channel, of course. 2022 cause of death report. Now, looking at causes of deaths. Now, cancer deaths, um, what, what they're saying here is uh, not a lot of data on causes of death, not as good as the UK data based on their people that died, uh, that were insured. Cancer deaths usually in the range of 102 to 105% of that which was expected. And this is data for uh, 2022 primarily. So some increase in cancer deaths, not as bad as we had feared by any means, but these one or two, well, one, two, three, four, five percent are actually quite large in terms of numbers. Cardiovascular deaths are higher. Non-communicable causes of deaths, uh, 10 percent lower, of course, because people weren't interacting, people sadly dying of other things. Uh, deaths from diabetes were very much higher. This isn't surprising because diabetes does need uh, really quite detailed ongoing management to keep people stabilised with diabetes. But there again, um, things like diabetic ketoacidosis are relatively easy to diagnose in, in the later stages. So it doesn't, it doesn't, again, it's not fully, it doesn't really fully explain why the causes of deaths from diabetes are higher. Uh, nervous system disorders, 30% higher. So it looks like we've got more cardiovascular deaths, more nervous system disorder deaths. And respiratory deaths weren't really that much higher. Now, we, this is what we've seen in the, in the UK. Um, other respiratory disorders in the UK, deaths are increased. Now, now, what's not mentioned here in the American data is liver disease. Now, in the United Kingdom, liver disease is much higher. So nervous system, cardiovascular, liver disease, all much higher in the UK. We've identified that cardiovascular and nervous system diseases are higher in the United States, but the liver disease isn't mentioned. I suspect we will find out that the United States is sadly uh, the same as the United Kingdom for increased amounts of deaths from liver disease. But we don't have that from that data, so we can't, we can't speculate. Non-medical deaths. Good to see that um, deaths by suicide, apart from drug overdoses, that's a non-deliberate drug overdoses, were noticed to be lower uh, during the uh, during the pandemic, so deaths from uh, suicide were noticeably lower during the pandemic. Good news. Um, now the Wall Street Journal has been covering this. Jump in deaths claims uh, on insurance, higher non-COVID deaths, all agreed. But then the headline is this: uh, Companies believe that lack of medical treatment during the pandemic has contributed to deaths from other causes. Well, I think. By the age range of the deaths that we've described, that really doesn't add up, I'm afraid. There's other causes of the deaths in younger people. And if the same cause is causing the deaths in older people, well, that'll be less obvious because more people, older people die anyway. Um, and, and more of those have, have died from COVID, uh, of course, especially earlier on in 2020 and 2021. So inconsistencies here, in, in, in my view, in the conclusions reached by the actuaries and the Wall Street and the Wall Street uh, Journal. Um, just, just briefly, I'm just going to give you a quick glimpse from another country. This is data from uh, New Zealand here. Uh, and New Zealand, again, as we would expect, where is it? So the, the, the top line there is the births in New Zealand, down a little bit maybe. Uh, that line there is the deaths in 2022, and uh, that means the natural increase of the population has actually decreased uh, because of the higher uh, death rate. So we see this higher death rate reflected, for example, in New Zealand in 2022, 2021, not in 2020. But of course, New Zealand did have its pandemic late, um, but thankfully the death rates were lower because most of the time when Australia and New Zealand had the, their pandemic, it was in the Omicron uh, era. So, good data from the Society of Actuaries. I don't think there's any question about that. They're interested in the, in the finances here. Maybe they get a little lost in the detail and aren't sort of thinking about the, the bigger picture somewhat. And maybe what we're doing here is saying, well, there is a bigger picture to this. What they're saying is not accounting for 
the deaths in the younger age range. And uh, do we need to think outside the box a little bit here in terms of the causes of these uh, excess deaths? And it is consistent with these appalling stories that we read in the newspaper. I'm not going to name any names, but we, we know people that have died in various circumstances at young age, completely unexpected, uh, very often from cardiac causes. It would tend to be from cardiac causes, of course, because that's what causes sudden death. If you die from liver disease, you'll die over a period of time. If you kind of awake one minute and, well, literally dead the next the next minute, that, that's nearly always from, from a cardiac uh, or circulatory cause. So these are the ones that are kind of hitting the headlines. And I'm afraid they are consistent with some um, not clearly identified or certainly not discussed additional cause or causes of death so we'll keep watching this one um we're not going to go away about it because it's there's thousands of people dying here that really shouldn't be dying but looking at it from this financial actuary's point of view is is a uh, interesting that this is in agreement uh, with other um, causes uh, other ways of monitoring the the cause of death we'll leave it there for now you draw your own conclusions. Let me know what you think. And of course, we look forward to a period where we can discuss these things much more openly without any threat of uh, censorship. We'll leave it there. Is that enough? Thank you for watching.